Okay, good morning. We're right at it. Glad to have you with us today. Beautiful day out, isn't it? Now, I'll probably have frost next week. <laughs> Usually the way it works, isn't it? Don't forget your syllabus there. A little girl was sitting on her grandfather's lap, and as he read her a bedtime story from time to time, she would take her eyes off the book and reach up and touch his wrinkled cheek. She was wondering, you know, things going on in her mind. And finally she spoke up, Grandpa, did God make you? Yes, sweetheart, he answered. God made me a long time ago. She paused. Grandpa, did God make me too? Yes, indeed, honey, he said. God made you just a little while ago. Filling their respective faces again, she observed, God's getting better at it, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know if this is a repeat or not. I'm not sure. A man walks into a very well-to-do church. I didn't tell that one, did I? Everyone turns to look at him as he enters wearing worn jeans and an old hat, sits in the back quietly. After service, pastor came back and talked with him. He said, we would like you to welcome you to our church and would like for you to come back. I would ask you just one thing. What is it, the man said. The pastor answered, telling him he should pray next time and ask God how he should dress before coming back. The man agreed he would ask God. Next Sunday, the same man showed up in the same worn jeans and old hat. After the service, the pastor asked him, I thought I told you to ask God how you should dress before coming back. The man answered, he said, I did. Pastor, I did exactly what you said to do. He said, what would God say? The man answered, God said he didn't know. He would never been here. <laughs> Three women, one German, one Japanese, and one hillbilly are sitting in a sauna. Suddenly there was a beeping sound. The German pressed her forearm and the beep stopped. The others looked at her questioningly. That was my pager, she said. I have a microchip under the skin of my arm. A few minutes later, a phone rang. The Japanese woman lifted her palm to her ear. When she finished, she explained, that was my mobile. I have a microchip in my hand. The hillbilly woman felt decidedly low tech. Not to be outdone, she decided she had to do something just as impressive. She stepped out of the sauna and went to the bathroom. She returned with a piece of toilet paper hanging from her behind. The others raised their eyebrows and stared. The hillbilly woman finally said, well, looky there, I'm getting the facts. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to kind of go through this kind of quickly today, and uh, I, on my page, I wrote down some questions about last week's and this week's lessons, and we'll have a little pop quiz. Would that be okay? We'll see if we're getting it or not. I think that might be good. Verse 6, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Paul says, since believers know the rapture could happen any moment, let's not be like most believers in a spiritual, not understanding slumber. They are in a fog by not SEP separating the day of Christ from the day of the Lord. And by the way, I, I'll be teaching that more next week, okay, that, that day, of, day of Christ. So we'll have a better understanding about that. As a result, they are in the dark. And in the dark means they had no mystery program understanding. And because within the mystery program is the rapture of the church. That God's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation or deliverance. So we don't have to worry 
we can worry, but we don't have to worry about us being in the tribulation. We worry about family members being in the tribulation. Can I get an amen on that one? Uh, the darkness of the wrath of God upon the earth in the tribulation. A, B, absent of mystery truth leads believers to this. They just, as Les says, they just blend everything. <laughs> they make Israel's ours. They bring ours in. They just put it all together and no separation whatsoever. Uh, isn't this true today? When believers are more focused on events in the tribulation rather than on the I am imminent return of Christ. We had all the uproar about the four blood moons and it didn't mean a lick except the fact that it was precise timing. Uh, God put all this precision together. The eclipse was the same way. I said last week, I think, I was watching this guy on TV, and he said it's a prophecy. He says the eclipse, April the 8th, the fourth month, the eighth day, chapter 4, verse 8. And he looked in his Bible at chapter 4, verse 8, out of a book in the Bible, and read that. And it has on it something like eagles. And he lives in Eagle something city. And the eclipse was coming. And he said it had prophetic proportions. It was just unbelievable. And of course, nothing happened. <laughs> B, Paul noted if there ever was a time for believers not to doze off, but to be wide awake, it is today. And I believe that with all my heart. I, I just think if we can hang on a little longer, we're going up. Uh, you just see everything going on, and it's unbelievable. The word sober there, Greek word there, nephos. It means to abstain from intoxicating drinks that would hinder them from A.L. always being spiritually, S-P-I-R, spiritually alert and ready for Christ's return. In other words, don't be caught up in the world's revelry, but remain clear watching. Now drop down to even Israel. Even Israel is to do this. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, one of the reasons that we are to look is that if you're looking for him, it helps you the way that you live right now. And if you're living right when he comes, you won't be ashamed, right? It's real simple. A lot of people said, I'm ready to go up. I'm ready to go up. Now, I know it's going to happen. I don't know if I'm ready to go up or not. I have to answer for a lot of things, and I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> I think sometimes we forget that. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, give an account of ourselves, right? And uh, the next verse, knowing therefore that you're going to stand before the judgment seat, the terror of the Lord. Uh, there's something involved in that. And I'm not quite sure what that is. I don't know if God's going to slap me around or what. <laughs> Even though I make it to heaven, I have to appear before him, give an account of the way that I live my Christian life. And that's kind of frightening when you think you have to answer for it. We just think of happy days are here again, you know. And uh, it's going to be great eventually, but we have to go before that judgment seat one time. Notice... Uh, verse uh, 7 now. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Paul shows two activities lost people and some Christians do at night. They sleep and drink. Paul reminds the Thessalonians that they should not adopt the lifestyle as those caught unaware, UN, unaware or unready. 
Most people often go to sleep thinking they are spiritually and morally accepted by God, even though they have not believed in the true, T-R-U-E, the true gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. It's amazing to me that there are multitudes of millions of people who think everything's okay, and they're going straight to hell. And uh, that's sad, isn't it? The word drunken, a person controlled by alcohol, but also a spiritual drunkenness by false, F-A-L, false teaching. I think uh, Revelation there, look at verse 2, verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Uh, there are many religions, and Bert was saying something to me this morning about that people will die for. And uh, Revelation 17, there are a lot of people that believe that the whore there is the Roman Catholic Church. I'm not sure if it is. I think she'll be a part of it for sure. Uh, I don't think it's just singling out her. I think the Antichrist and their religion uh, will use whoever Revelation 17 is, and then the Antichrist will turn on her at mid-trib, by the way, turn on her, destroy her, and saying, here's the religion that you are to worship me. I'm God. And so it's going to get interesting one day. But we don't have to worry about that. We'll be in heaven, right? Verse 8. But let us who are of the day, we have an understanding of the rapture, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Paul says, since we believers are the light, we've been saved, right? And we understand the mystery program that involves the rapture, that we will be part of the day of Christ going up in the rapture. We are not, N-O-T, not to live like those of the night. Perhaps they're not saved. They don't know the mystery truth of the rapture before the trib. And they spiritualize the word. In other words, they go into a passage of scripture and they just use it like that guy did, chapter 4, verse 8. <laughs> Remember, back in chapter 1, verse 3, it says, faith, love, and hope. Here it says, putting on the breastplate of faith. Faith is a P-R-O, protection for the believer. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. It's vital that we stay close in the church, close to the Word of God, because the Word of God is what gives us our faith. Through your devotions, reading the Word, and so on. And it's that faith that will help you as we draw near the time that we will go up. Here is an ongoing trust in God's word. The failure is not to continue to learn and grow in faith. You don't come to a point in your life where you know it all. Uh, word of God, you, you can't wear it out. You read it this week, and you read the same passage next week, you get something different next week that's added to it. And then you can read that passage again another week later and get something else out of it. The Word of God's amazing. The word love is having God's love in our hearts that encourages us to follow compassionately, have an inner desire, God's will, to follow God's will. You can read Romans there. Notice Ephesians 6. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing what? 
doing the will of God, how? From the heart. And that's what love is. You do it because you know it pleases God and you love God. So you do it from your heart. He says, for an helmet, the hope of salvation. A helmet protects the, what? The mind, which helps to give us security. Saint, Satan tries to get us to doubt. It's a mind game, isn't it? A lot of time, our battles are with our minds. And Satan throws all kinds of thoughts, uh, pressure toward the child of God to get him to distrust God's word and his promises. If he can get you away from God and his word, he can get you. <laughs> if he can get you to question God's word, uh, you're on a slippery slope right there, okay? He says, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. How did Satan get Eve to sin? Uh, he worked in her mind, didn't he? He just asked her questions, quoted scripture wrong. He, get, he began to get her to question God and to doubt what God had even said. And that's what he does with us too. B, salvation here means to rescue, to D-E, deliver. Remember the context. It is about believers delivered from the horrors of the day of the Lord. So the word salvation doesn't always mean uh, forgiveness of sins and going to heaven, being saved. It has the idea also of being delivered. Now when you got saved, you were delivered from your sin. But the context determines its true meaning. And in this context, it's talking about salvation, deliverance from the tribulation because we're going up in the rapture. Okay? Verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation, deliverance by our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we believers are not associated with the day of the Lord's wrath. We are of the day, D-A-Y, mystery revelation, associated with the rapture, to meet the Lord in the air, B-E-F, before the tribulation. That's why we're children of the day, of the light. Does that make sense? When the body of Christ is R.E. removed, at that precise moment, there will be no believers on earth. I wonder who will believe first. Who are going to be the first ones? Who? Who? Yeah. Yeah. But who's going to be the two believers? We believe Elijah and Moses. Then who do they win? The 144,000. And then the gospel will be preached to the world. That gospel in tribulation. Interesting, isn't it? Well, I thought it was anyway. <laughs> the word wrath. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. I like that, out of it. If you remember, uh, he says the day of the Lord associated with the Lord's return to earth to take care of the nations of the earth and sinners, it will be as the days of Noah. The days of Noah, when the flood came, who did it take away? It took the lost people away. And it preserved Noah's family. The lost people were taken. Two in the field, one shall be taken. The, the lost people are taken away. 
And that is the tribulation and the judgment of the nations. The lost are taken away. Okay, let me see here. Revelation 6.17. For the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall be able to stand? And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. There is no idea of P-A-R, partial rapture here. There are some people who try to say that the body of Christ's church will go through the first three and a half years. And then they go up. And then there are some people that say only the true believers of the bride of Christ will be caught up. Other believers will be left behind to have to suffer going through the tribulation. I mean, that's just crazy, okay? Uh, we're all going up at one time. God's not going to break his body apart. We go up whole, one body, one day. A question has been asked, what is the difference between tribulation suffering now and the sufferings that will come? The answer, suffering today is inflicted by Satan, the world, and our fallen, F-A-L-L, -L, fallen flesh. I've said before, the biggest battle I have is myself. And we reap what we sow. As a result, a lot of times we sow wrongly, we suffer because of what we've done. There are consequences, okay? The wrath is to come. The wrath to come is God's judgment with his punishment poured out on sinful mankind. His hand of protection will be, R-E, removed except for the believing Jews and a few Gentiles. They are still many who will suffer martyrdom. And you know Revelation there. I just put the reference so if you show somebody the souls that's in, that's in heaven there. Verse 10. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. The basis of reason of our deliverance, what made it possible, is because of what Christ has done for us. The only reason we're going is because of our wonderful Savior. Jesus died for sinners, and if any will believe, they in turn will, L.I., live together with him. This exchange shows the heart of the gospel that teaches Christ was raised from the dead so that we, the body, could live with him in heaven. You can read those verses there if you want. I like 2 Corinthians 4.14, 4, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus. Number two, deliverance from the wrath to come and salvation of the soul is for all believers of the gospel, whether dead or alive. Either way, we are to live with Christ. Awake or sleep, we are SEC secure in Christ. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wherever the Lord is, that's where our soul will be. And since we know he's seated in the third heaven on the right hand of the Father... That's our position in heavenly places. We will be in the third heaven one day. Okay? Our body might be asleep, but our soul is with the Lord, waiting for the rapture. Because when the rapture happens, my soul is reunited with a resurrected, glorified body, and my spirit and soul re-enter uh, that glorified body to be forever. Now, if we're alive and the rapture happens, Richard has predicted every December that Jesus was coming. I'm looking forward to the day it actually happens. <laughs> but uh, it's, not, it's nice to know that even if I'm, my body, I'm dead, my body's asleep, my soul is with the Lord. And your soul has form. Uh, it has identity. 
you, you can know who it is by your soul, the real person. And uh, they recognize one another. So you keep the same ugly mug. <laughs> Amen. You'll be younger. <laughs> Paul says in Romans 8, For I am persuaded that neither death, and it goes on to state, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has taken the stinger out of death, right? He's given us the victory. Death is not a waiting period and so on. It's, you're just, uh, I heard somebody say, you're just moving on. You really don't die, you just move on to your next place with your soul until the rapture. And verse 11, wherefore comfort yourselves together, netify one another, even as also you do. Paul says with this MYS mystery truth of all believers being with their believing loved ones, those now, those asleep, and with Christ, what an Ian encouragement. Anybody have anybody in heaven today? Of course, we all we have people there that we love. They've gone on. And if they have believed in Christ and the gospel, you'll see them again. They're waiting on us. I'm sure Carol's mom and dad will be. They're waiting on us to slap me that I should have treated her better. <laughs> we should, R.E., remind one another of this truth to give us faith, hope, and love. We are to live in the light of his coming for us and how that gives us great comfort. Now, I went through that fast. I know um, it's amazing when you go to a lost person's funeral and you go to a saved person's funeral and you say to yourself, what a difference. What a difference. With the Christian funeral, there's hope. <clears throat> For those who have grown in the Lord, there's confidence, there's assurance, there's security there because they know they're with the Lord. And one day they'll see him again. And I've been to funerals where they're trying to pull the body out of the grave crying or out of the casket crying. It's unbelievable. And uh, you sit there and the spirit in the service of a lost person you ask him, I remember the very first funeral I ever did as a pastor, a guy called and said uh, his mom had died and uh, the owner of the day camp, Carol, John Mont. And uh, anyway, he, he said the preacher was supposed to be there. He didn't show up. So I ran and threw his sport jacket on real fast and tied and took off and went down to the funeral home. Went in there, and she's in there, and there's several people there. And he said, thank you for doing it. I said, oh, my privilege. I said, now, do you know if she was saved or not? He says, no, I don't think so. No, he just turned around walked away. didn't think anything about it. And so that was my first funeral. And I said, what kind of hope can I give them, <laughs> you know? So you say something like, uh, well, we hope that sometime in her life... <laughs> that there was a time that she heard the gospel and believed it. And uh, if so, that means she's in heaven. If not, she's not. And uh, then you go down the plan of salvation to give them hope, of course. Now, here's some questions I wrote down, just real simple. What does imminent mean? Imminent. Huh? Any time, any moment, right? Uh, it could happen right now if the Lord wrote to, right? 
And if that's true, why is that truth not in the mindset of most Christians? Why isn't that truth in the minds of most Christians? Most Christians don't want him to come back right now. I mean, that's just a fact. Earl? Send their life. Be living for the Lord. What would somebody else say? They love the world. Roots are pretty deep. You know, uh, the word caught up to meet the Lord in the air, uh, it has the idea of taken by force. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. In other words, some people's roots are so deep, he's going to have to pull them up. <laughs> Even though they're saved, he's going to pull them up by force to get them up. <laughs> that's sad, isn't it? Carol was saying to me last night, she's been having some physical problems, and she said, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> We're ready for it. Then another question, what happens when we don't separate the day of the Lord from the day of Christ. What? Okay, confusion. Give me some specifics. What? Puts us in the tribulation. True. Huh? Live in fear. Why? Why? Because we think we're going through the tribulation. <laughs> I'd be fearful if I was going in tribulation. Yeah. No hope of deliverance whatsoever. Anybody else? Don't rightly divide. As a result, they don't separate. <laughs> uh, they just don't. Uh, huh? Yes. And that's true. Yes, uh, I've, we were having a small group Bible study years ago, and most of the groups in there uh, were younger. And you say, boy, I, I believe the Lord's coming soon. And I think Connie said that, actually. And all of them said, oh, no, they don't want him to come yet. And, and one of the reasons is they want to live their life first. They do want to get married and have kids and go through all that. And, you know, when they get 95, you know, they can put their suit on and say, okay, God, I'm ready now. <laughs> Why do people in Christendom focus on things of the end times, like the four blood moons, the eclipse? And rather than the rapture, actually. What do you think? Yes. Feeds the flesh. That's true. I've got an idea here. Nobody knows about it. Let me tell you about it. We have to be careful always wanting to give new truth rather than just sticking with the old truth. Yes, Roger. Interesting. Very good. Who requires a sign? Are you part of that? Well, why are we always looking for signs? We don't need anything. He's coming soon. The word says that. Okay. Uh, what happens to the mind when we only sleep and drink? happened? We're not, sober. 
I'm not sober. True. Stay confused. Did I hear Larry? Separates us from the love of God. Uh, when we sleep and drink, we become just like the world, right? And we will not be ready when he returns. What is spiritual adultery? Spiritual adultery. More than one God, true. Putting what? Above God. Right. If you remember, spiritual adultery is you become controlled by false teaching. Okay? That's probably most of Christendom right there. Controlled by false teaching. What does it mean that we are light? What does it mean we are light? L-I-G-H-T. Because of Christ in us, true. We're out of darkness. We expose sin. Because we are light. And we have an understanding of the mystery program. Right? That's why we're light. we have light. Christ in us, of course. But understanding the scriptures of rightly dividing. That's why we can separate the tribulation from the rapture. Okay? What's our defense against the attacks and darts of doubt. Okay, the Word of God. What does the Word do? Right, gives us our faith. You know, thy Word. Uh, what? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The entrance of thy words giveth the light, he giveth understanding unto the simple. Uh, what happens when the body church is removed? <laughs> You're right. Bad. <laughs> You're right. Tribulation. Salt and light is removed. That which hinders is removed. Now depravity can go full force. No. I believe this. No, no Holy Spirit like it is today. I think the Spirit of God has to be here in some capacity in order for people to be saved during the tribulation, however that works. But remember, we go up here and then the seven-year tribulation. However... There is a gap here, and I don't know how long that gap is. I've read several writers. Some believe it's a 75 days, a year. I don't know how long that gap is, but it has come about where the temple is rebuilt. The Antichrist has the rise of power, and he has to sign the peace pact with Israel. For that to begin. It's when they sign the peace pact. That's, that's the calendar, the time clock for the seven year tribulation to start. So there could be a little gap right there. That's interesting to me. I, I haven't ever found a sufficient answer to that. <laughs> One day we'll just have to ask the Lord. Are we in the tribulation right now? Why? What? <laughs> We're still paying taxes. What? <laughs> oh, 
boy, we ain't seen nothing yet, as the song goes. Who said that? We ain't seen nothing yet. Who said it? Said it. Al Jolson. You ain't seen nothing yet. Didn't you? Anybody know Al Jolson? He's a great singer. Yeah. The reason we're not in the tribulation, and the reason I say that, uh, the one guy by named Baxter, remember he used to be on TV? He was trying to say we were in the judgment of the tribulation. And the reason we're not in the tribulation is the body of Christ is still here. Amen. That's why we're not in the tribulation. When the body's removed, then you can go in the tribulation. And then, what's the basis for our comfort and edifying to other believers? What's the basis for it? Finished work of Christ, of course. The love of Christ. We're going to be raptured. Exactly. And we need to keep repeating that in the ear of other believers. How many churches today teach and preach about the rapture? And if you don't want to call it rapture, the departure, the calling up, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> We're going up. And so that is an encouragement. That's what Paul's trying to share with them. You don't even have to worry about your loved ones who've died. You don't have to worry about yourself. You're going up before the day of the Lord. And so he's been driving that home here. In 2 Thessalonians, of course, that's when the man of sin comes on the scene, right? And we'll look at that perhaps down the road. But uh, I just think I'm thankful to God that I don't have to worry about it. I'm just, I can live my life and try to uh, be a good Christian and, and, uh, and so on and so on and try to be pleasing. The goal of our life is to please God. That should be the priority that we should try to follow. I want to please God. Amen. A lot of times I fail doing that, but I just wipe the dust off and let's try again, right? And so uh, God's a merciful God. I'm long-suffering. I'm grateful for that. But just uh, the fact that I know that I do know that I'm going up one day when I hear that trumpet sound and uh, somebody, somebody said, Gabriel's already licking his lips. <laughs> it's going to be soon. It's imminent. And they said, well, they've been saying that for years. Yeah, but one day it will happen. And as you look around the world and you see what's about ready to happen and what's going on right now, you can't help but say it has to be soon. Events going on today have never, ever taken place before like it's going on right now. So it has to be, has to be soon. Amen? Okay, I'm going to close. Anybody? Y'all have it? Bert. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And one day he'll be the chief shepherd, won't he? I think, uh, yeah, I think that's a good point. I should have said something about that. The word hope is not like, yeah, yeah, we wish, we hope. It might. It has the idea of assurity, confidence that it's going to take place, and it is a promise from God. Okay, we have 20 minutes till the next service. Okay, God bless you.